this is probably gonna be the most important Hearthstone video you will ever watch if you wanna have more gold and legendaries in the game. If you want a bigger and better collection, you need to know all of these tips and tricks, and even though some work a lot better than others, combining them will give you the best results. If you find the video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and heck, maybe even share it with your Hearthstone friends. I'm sure they're gonna thank you for it. Now, let's check out the tips. You are not prepared! The first and most important tip to farming a lot of gold in Hearthstone, and hence legendaries, is for you to be farming up the reward track as much as you can. As you can see, I'm already well past level 100, and after level 100, you start earning 50 gold per each level. And each level is 1500 XP. There are a lot of ways for you to be farming a lot of XP in Hearthstone, be it playing Standard, Wild, Arena Duels, Battlegrounds, and Mercenaries. But obviously the best way is still Mercenaries. Some people try to cheat the system and use bots in Wild or Standard, and that does give them a lot of XP, but it also is gonna get them banned, because Hearthstone is actually now taking action against people like that, so do not risk your accounts. Other people would say that Battlegrounds are also a great option for you, even though it's not a bad way to AFK farm like that, but you're still kinda interfering with people's games like that, and also you're not gonna be farming as much XP, as well as it's not gonna be as reliable, cause some games end a lot faster than others. So the best way is still to actually just farm with mercenaries, and even though a lot of people dislike the mode and don't really enjoy playing it, the good news is you don't need to. You're not actually playing the mode, you're just farming XP like many many others. All you need to do is go to the travel point, and go to Barons, and just spam the first zone. Personally I do it on Heroic because I do farm mercenaries a bit. Enter the first zone, pick any party, like all of my mercenaries are 30 nowadays, but you should have no problem finishing it with pretty much anything as soon as you level it up a bit, which is really gonna happen in no time. You join the fight, and you leave it like that for 30 minutes. If you want things to be happening faster, you can just click this button and it's gonna put the first three mercenaries from the bench on the battlefield, and this way you save yourself a bunch of clicks. And yeah, like I said, you just leave it like this for 30 minutes, and after that you're gonna return to the maximum amount of XP, which, if you have the reward track bonuses, is gonna be 202. If you do this over and over again, let's say 2 times per hour for 8 hours, that's gonna be 404 XP times 8, which equals basically 100 gold for free each day like that, so that's 3000 gold per month. And this is putting it mildly, like if you're on the computer like me all day, you can get a lot bigger numbers here. And you could even be doing this on your phone while you're using your computer, or heck, whatever else you're doing in your life. You just have to keep remembering to get back to the game before 30 minutes pass, because if you actually leave the game closed for more than 30 minutes, the XP is gonna reset, so you're not gonna be getting anything if you get back to the game after that. If you actually leave the game running, it is going to count the XP for you up to 30 minutes, and after that, the game will automatically close and disconnect you, and if you don't come back for 30 more minutes, then it's gonna reset the XP, so if you're leaving the game open, you have about 1 hour to return to claim your earned XP. And this is going to be a great way for you to be just keep on spamming mercenaries, so you can get 202 XP every 30 minutes, which in a day, piles up a lot. Also make sure to just enter the next fight as soon as possible, because while on your on this screen you're not earning any sort of XP, so just jump into the next one and keep on rinse and repeating. You guys can even set yourself a timer, so you have 28 minutes on the clock, so you know when you should be returning to collect that XP, so that way you're not gonna be skipping out on extra gains. Now the next tip is actually regarding your collection directly. You can go to your collection, and as you guys all know, there is the mass disenchant button. This is something you should actually never click. The reason for that is you're gonna be missing out on a lot of gains if you actually do this, because this is gonna disenchant every extra copy you own from a card, including the ones that are definitely in for a nerf. Like if you had extra copies of things like Relic of Dimension which got nerfed recently, you would have been getting 400 dust each from these, because they're nerfed epics, and that gives you the full disenchant value instead of just 100. On the other hand, Shock Spitter also got nerfed recently, and it could even get nerfed again, and as you can see right now if I disenchant this it only gives me 5 dust back, but when it's actually nerfed it's gonna be giving you 50 a copy. And that's kinda huge, because commons definitely stack up a lot if you have opened a bunch of packs. So basically what I'm trying to say is, try not to be clicking the mass disenchant button ever, but just disenchant card by card, 
when you actually need the dust. And when you're disenchanting, definitely try and think if this card actually has nerf potential, cause a lot of the times, even though a card is not getting nerfed instantly, it could get nerfed down the road, so you gotta be thinking long and hard for some of these in order to get tons of extra dust like that. Also, when a nerf actually hits, what you wanna be doing is you wanna write refund in the search bar, and right now, there hasn't been nerfs recently for the last two weeks, so this is empty, but when the next nerf hits, and we should actually be hearing about it in the next couple of weeks, when you write refund, all of the cards that got nerfed will be shown for you here, and what you want to do is actually disenchant every single one of them if you're actually not using them right now, like literally right now. There's not gonna be any downside for you to disenchant those cards right now, because you are gonna be getting the absolute full amount of dust, which you would be using if you actually want to craft them back. So for a nerfed legendary that's 1600 dust, nerfed epic is 400, rare is 100, and a common is 50. And that is the exact amount of dust you will be needing to craft those cards back, so you could just do it in the future if you actually decide you still want to be playing with those cards. When a nerf hits, you will have exactly two weeks to actually disenchant those cards, so make sure to remove them before that nerf window is closed. Another thing you want to be doing is actually disenchanting your golden cards and leaving yourself only with the regular variants. If you write extra into the search bar, you're gonna see all of the extra copies of cards you have, and as you can see I have two golden acolytes of death, which is kind of a sucky card to begin with, and I can get 50 dust each instead of the regular 5. Golden rares are gonna be giving you 100 each, golden epics are giving 400, and golden legendaries are giving 1600, which is great. So yeah, basically try to be disenchanting golden cards and only keep yourself with the common variants so you can actually have dust for all of those decks you actually want to be playing. Also, now you're actually free to be disenchanting bad legendary cards if you feel like it, because you are protected from opening that bad legendary until you have actually opened all of the legendaries from a certain set. So even though back in the day disenchanting things like Millhouse was actually considered a bad idea, now there's no downside for you to do that, except if you're obviously trying to collect every single legendary like me. Another small tip here, which could actually go a long way if you enjoy it, is for you to try to get good at arena and duels, because the rewards here really are worth it if you actually manage to climb some serious wins. Both arena and duels are gonna reward you bigger and better rewards, depending on how many wins you've actually racked up. All the way up to 12 wins, which really gives you some serious bang for your buck. This is something I enjoyed doing back in the day, farming arenas, and nowadays that also gains you a ton of XP while you're playing, so win or lose, you're still gonna be racking up a lot of XP while doing so. But obviously this is an active way of farming gold, unlike the AFK on mercenaries. But still, if you actually wanna be playing Hearthstone and earning better rewards, this would be a great way of doing so. Just keep in mind that nowadays the meta for Arena is kinda all over the place, and if you don't get Death Knight, you're gonna be kinda in a bad spot. But yeah, the thing is you don't actually need to be going infinite to actually be coming out ahead from Arena runs. like. Even just achieving something like 4 wins is still giving you a lot of rewards, cause one arena run is costing you 150 gold, which is basically 100 gold a pack, and you get 50 to 60 gold, including one random reward which could be more gold, or just dust, or a rare card, so you're still gonna be coming out ahead, even though it's gonna be taking you about one hour to actually get those rewards. But yeah, the lower you go, it's gonna be a lot, a lot better, but it's not gonna be something you're gonna be getting quite often nowadays, unless you're really good at the mode. The other thing you should be doing with arenas and duels is actually leave yourself an unfinished arena or duels run when a major change to the format is gonna be coming. You kinda have to be on your toes for when these things are about to happen, but they do usually announce it on Twitter or in patch notes or both. So if you actually leave yourself an unfinished arena and duels run, after the major change to the format happens, you're gonna get all of the rewards of the unfinished run, and then you're gonna get another arena run for free. And that way you're basically gaining 150 gold for free extra. The next tip is gonna be basically for the things that are actually worth buying in Hearthstone. The most important things you need to be buying in Hearthstone are actually with gold still, and those would be the mini sets, including the Lich King mini set that just came out. Even though it's a bit hard to actually see how you can buy the mini set for gold, you just click on the paid variant, and you click down on the normal variant, and as you can see I already own it, but it will be costing you 2000 gold if you still haven't bought it. Same goes for the mini sets, you just gotta scroll down a little and you can still find them, 
But again, first you're gonna be seeing the paid variant, and you gotta select the normal variant, basically, which is gonna be costing 2000 gold again. No matter how bad a mini set could be, it's still very much worth it, because you are getting 4 legendaries at the price of 20 packs, and almost nobody has actually gotten 4 legendaries in 20 packs. Just the sheer amount of dust value you're gonna be getting from buying the mini set for 2000 gold definitely should be enough reason for you to actually buy it. The other thing is, if you're actually planning on opening more packs from the set from which the mini set is, you're gonna start opening mini set cards like that, and that is gonna make the value for you a lot less. So basically, yeah, whenever a new mini set comes out, make sure to buy it, and also try to buy the old ones at least from the ones that are remaining in the Hearthstone rotation. For instance, Altriag Valley, Stormwind and Barons are gonna be rotating in a few months on April, so you don't really need to be buying the mini set if you already have it. But for Sunken City and Castle Nephia and the new one for March the Blitch King, which should be coming out in several weeks, it's definitely gonna be very worth it for you to be spending that 2000 gold on it. Another thing that's actually pretty worth it for you to do is to get your guaranteed legendary from the first 10 packs of a set you haven't gotten a legendary from yet from a pack. This means that if you just started playing Hearthstone, if you start opening packs like, let's say from Barons, you will be getting a guaranteed legendary in the first 10 packs. The most cost effective way for you to be doing this is to start buying a single pack of the sets you haven't gotten a legendary from yet and open it and see if you get that guaranteed legendary. And do that until you do and you're always gonna open one from the first 10 packs. There is such a guaranteed pity timer also for the standard packs, for the golden packs, but those always cost money so let's not talk about that. And you're also guaranteed from wild as well. But it's probably not gonna be super worth it for you to start opening single packs from the oldest sets cause that is like that is gonna be a ton of gold you're gonna have to spend but it's still somewhat kind of efficient for you because it's gonna give you a lot of extra dust if you actually decide to just disenchant those wild legendaries but yeah for standard at least it's gonna be very worth it for you to get your guaranteed legendary from the first 10 packs from each set another thing that i really think is also worth buying but this time actually for money would be the paid reward track which is gonna give you a ton of cosmetics but also this extra xp boost which is gonna make it a lot easier for you to actually reach level 400 on the reward track which is by the way the maximum level you could reach. After that you're literally not gonna be gaining any XP, but yeah this is gonna make it a lot easier for you to actually reach level 400. And even though you don't really need it, if you're farming daily on the mercenaries, it's still pretty nice to get things done faster. But also the sheer amount of cosmetics you're getting, and also golden cards and such, is gonna be pretty good for you, so definitely consider throwing that 20 bucks, which is basically 5 bucks per month since the reward track lasts for 4 months. And the other thing that really pays off getting would be the mega bundles when a new set comes, but obviously those are pretty expensive. So if you're not comfortable throwing that much money at the game, another thing you could be doing is actually entering all sorts of creator giveaways, which you will be finding plenty of on Twitter when the card reveal season starts. If you do your best to actually enter as many contests as you can like that, odds are actually in your favor to win one or two bundles like that, which could be pretty nice for you. Another thing you really shouldn't be doing as well is crafting those absolutely obvious broken decks out there that are due to a nerf any time now. Right now, for instance, if you're thinking about crafting Miracle Rogue, you're probably gonna end up severely burned, because what's gonna end up getting nerfed is probably another nerf to Wild Pognos, which is a couple of rares, so congratulations, you got 200 dust back. Maybe Ghoul's gonna get nerfed, maybe Potion Belt's gonna get nerfed, you know, like, random rare cards, most probably not legendaries, and that is really gonna burn your collection in the long run. And to all the people that tell you craft away, like, you're gonna get your dust back, cause you're gonna get a refund when the cards get nerfed, like, yeah, what are you gonna do with that 400 dust if, let's say, Ghoulish Alchemist and Wild Bug Mole get nerfed? Remember Shock Spitter Hunter? What got nerfed there? A couple of comments. The good thing with this deck is at least that it actually remained very strong and is probably in for another nerf soon. But yeah, the point stands, like, you should not feel safe just because you're gonna get a refund on the nerfed cards. You're not gonna get a refund on all of the legendaries you actually crafted for that deck. Like, for instance, if you had to craft Beast Stalker Tavish, which is actually rotating in 3 months, or Barak Bane, which is also rotating, you're gonna be losing a lot of dust along the way if you keep on crafting the most broken, obviously nerfable decks. And now moving on to the last portion of the tips, which are not super significant, but are still pretty important for you to keep on doing. Always try to complete your weekly and daily quests, so you don't miss out on extra XP. And also don't forget you can actually reroll a daily and a weekly quest once per day, if you actually got low rolled and actually received a 1080 quest, instead of a 1200 or higher. 
Keep in mind if you actually reroll a 1200 quest here, it will always give you a lesser quest of 1080. So for instance, if you're not comfortable playing expensive cards like that, but you're always gonna be getting a lesser XP quest instead. Whereas if you reroll a 1080 quest, you have a chance of getting a higher reward quest like 1200 or even a challenge of friend. And also for the weekly quest, you're never gonna be able to get an extra 3000 XP quest, so don't bother trying, just reroll these if you're not comfortable doing some of the steps. Like for instance, I'm not planning on playing this many non-standard modes, so let's re-roll that instead. And this is gonna be a lot easier for me to do while playing standard. You could also actually farm some of these quests in mercenaries, like for instance deal 100 fell damage, like imagine building a specific standard deck for that. Instead you can just do it literally in a couple of minutes on mercenaries, as long as you have some of those mercenaries unlocked. The other obvious thing you need to be doing is always finish your tavern brawls, because getting one extra pack of the current year in Hearthstone definitely stacks up, and it's not that hard to actually remember to do this each week. Just remember the tavern brawls always reset on Wednesday, so don't forget to do yours before that. As you can see, I'm also saving my standard packs, and this way when a new set comes, I first open my standard packs, so I can open as much as new cards from these old gathered packs. And that way I don't need to buy as many of the new actual packs. So these are all the tips. I hope you found them helpful and let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Now check out my latest meta report so you know what to play for Easy Legend. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.